So entrepreneurship, right? Uh, it speaks, the reason I played that video is because um, that's who Kevin is. He's an entrepreneur. Um, if you are following Kevin, um, you will see that in, uh, later in his life, he wanted to be somebody great. He wanted to, to find more solutions to the problem his community faced. And because of that, he was able to benefit from it. So today our training is gonna be on entrepreneurship, which I'm going to help you define and see if maybe that's the way that you have to go. But I personally believe that as a country, um, we need to have entrepreneurs because we can all agree that to a great extent, the government of Liberia is not doing anything to help all of us combine with our situations. And they are not even in the capacity to do such. So we cannot and we will not wait for the government to take action before we improve our lives. So in order for us to take actions, we need to be entrepreneurs. We need to be people who solve societal problems. So today's training is gonna be helping you, uh, showing you how exactly you can do that and what it is and what it means to be an entrepreneur. So I'm Mr. Prince Larmi Jarbo, and I am the founder and chairman of Project Change Board of Directors. And I'm also <clears throat> the founder of the Prince L. Jarbo Foundation. And in the Air Force, I am a financial analyst. Uh, I deal with budgeting and helping manage the Air Force budget for our base at Edwards Air Force Base in California. I also study business economics at the University of Ashford, of which I'm going to be graduating next year. I myself, I am an entrepreneur and I'm going to tell you why, because I have businesses um, that I run and even the fact that I was, I've been able to establish with the help of God Project Change, that in itself, it is an entrepreneur move. So overview. So we're going to learn today who is and who is not an entrepreneur. I'm going to also cover the benefits and cost of being an entrepreneurship. Because what we're trying to do here, Melvin, whenever you can, uh, please, you're in front of the camera. So. What are you doing, Melvin? You're in front of the camera. So we're gonna, we're gonna tell you the benefits and costs because we don't want you to think that the, the, the path of which you will choose or have chosen to become a change maker is anything that's easy. It is absolutely not easy. But is it the path that you need to take? 100% it is the path. And why do you need to take that path? Because if you don't, you are going to fail at life. There is no other way if you don't take responsibility for yourself. So we're going to go over the benefits and we're also going to go over the, the cost. So by cost, we mean, what is it gonna, hold on. So Melvin, the answer to your question would be uh, no, no. So they can do that outside of here. If we do not have the time, that will be, they can do that on their own time. But the training come first. And I can't hear you, you gotta unmute yourself. Albert, please unmute the... Okay, can you guys hear me now? Please raise your hand if you can. What did you say? I'm, I'm not hearing you, Melvin. So that's what, that's what I was trying to answer you. I said, the preparation for the business plan competition, they are going to have to do that by themselves. So on their own time, maybe before school or after school sometime, they're gonna to have to find time for that, but the training comes first. Um, we only put that on the agenda if we have enough time to do it. 
but they need to work on their, their BBC by themselves. So I'm gonna go ahead with the training one more time. Can you guys hear me? Please wave your hand. All right, thank you. So like I said, we're gonna go over the benefits and cost of entrepreneurship. And then I'm gonna discuss how you can become an entrepreneur if you don't already know how. Then we're gonna find, we're gonna try finding a need and establishing a solution. So what does it mean by finding the need and how can you establish a solution just like you saw Kelvin was doing instead of making excuses. So who is an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur is Kelvin, perfect example. And you guys already saw the video. This is basically someone who's able to, who's willing to find innovative solutions to everyday problems. So like with Kelvin in the thing, you saw that Kelvin found solutions to one, communication, people being able to you know, hear the news, be entertained, that was a problem. You know, if we do not have radio stations, if we do not have TV stations, that you know, means that information cannot get to people. So that is a problem. And now Kevin is an entrepreneur because he came and he identified that problem and he found a solution. That, that is what makes him uh, an entrepreneur. He found an innovative solution and it's innovative because he went and he dug into the trash can and he combined different parts of different electronic devices to make a radio station. That is why he's an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is someone who is also able to develop a business idea and practicalize it through a series of financial risk. So by a business idea. So it's okay, you know, you can go ahead and find a solution. But if you are not applying the business mentality to that solution, then you are not necessarily an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is somebody who can find a solution and then turn that solution into a business. And what do I mean by that is, if Kelvin would have um, taken his idea of the radio station and then charged people to subscribe to his radio station or to listen to his radio station or even come on the station, then he is applying the business idea. He's practicalizing that by taking series of financial risk. And financial risk will be, you know, Kelvin basically having to pay for gas for the generator that's supplying the electricity or Kelvin having to you know, pay people you know, to work for him in order to maintain the radio station. Those are financial risks he's taking. So if you're not taking any financial risk, if somebody else is taking the financial responsibility, you are not an entrepreneur. You are just a person with a good idea. So in order to be an entrepreneur, you have to be willing to take risk. That's the biggest difference. That's why a lot of people are not entrepreneurs. So for me, I am 24 years old and I bought a house last year, middle of the year. Now, many people my age do not have a house in America. I live in a three bedroom house with two bathrooms. You know, because I have that mentality of being an entrepreneur, of taking risks, that's why I was able to make the move to even buy a house. The reason why it's risky to buy a house is because one, is expensive, and two, you don't know what the future holds. Uh, you don't know if you're gonna have the money uh, to keep paying for your house. So if you don't have that money, you could eventually get kicked out. And because of that, a lot of people do not take the risk. But for me, that doesn't scare me necessarily. I still look at the advantages and I pay more attention to the advantages than the disadvantages because always the, the benefits always outweighs the cost. And then in order to be an un entrepreneur again, you have to be innovative you have to know how to solve problem. You have to be patient because even if you're solving a problem, is you're not gonna get the solution right away or you're not gonna see the results right away. And you need to be committed and you need to be goal orient oriented. So those are you know, attributes you need before you can become an entrepreneur or those are attributes you need to become an entrepreneur. But ultimately an entrepreneur is somebody who wants to make the society better. And you might say, oh, but they are making money from it. So uh, they're, they're not trying to make it better. They're just trying to profit. Well, passion you know, can lead to business. We all need to sustain ourselves. We all need to be financially free. So it's 100% okay if you can turn your passion into business. If you want to see the, the, the world become a better place and you're able to turn that into a business, that is exactly what makes you an entrepreneur. So who is not an entrepreneur? 
someone who is not an entrepreneur is someone who is content with the way things are and lacks the ability to think creatively. So this is, you know, you guys have to look at more yourself and ask yourself, do I think creatively? Do I, am I able to challenge myself to find creative solutions to my problems? So if you can't do that, then you are not an entrepreneur. And then an entrepreneur, uh, someone who is not an entrepreneur is the person who's unwilling to bear any form of financial risk. Like I told you, entrepreneurship involves risk. You have to take financial risk. You have to take other risks of losing your time, your freedom. So you need to be willing to take risk. Now, you do need to know how to mitigate risk. You do need to know how to manage risk. You just don't want, you want to take risk based on facts, based on data. But you are always going to be taking some form of risk. So you have to accept that. And as someone who is not an entrepreneur, as someone who is willing to work for others uh, and wants to remain an employee. So if you want to be a teacher, if you want to, you know, which teachers are absolutely great, they're absolutely necessary. But if you want to work for a firm and just stay working from people to have that secure income every month, then you are not an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur wants freedom. They want to do things for themselves. They want to be the person providing jobs. And then most people are not entrepreneurs, but they are rather average citizens who wait for others to make things happen. So entrepreneurs do not wait for, to get instructions from their bosses. In fact, they leave their jobs to go and become their own boss and take the financial risk and be willing not to work for others. So those people are people who are not entrepreneurs. So what is the benefits of being an entrepreneur? The benefit of being an entrepreneur is the flexibility of your schedule and income. So basically you get to control your schedule. You work for yourself and you also get to control your income. The amount of work you put in is going to depict how much income you get. So if you work very low hours of you, uh, you put in very little effort, of course, excuse me, you're going to get a very little income, but it could be a positive thing if you are willing to put in more work and work the extra hours and you know become and you'll be able to make more income. And the reason it's easier to do this for entrepreneurs is because we are passion driven. And whenever we are working, it really doesn't feel like work. And then the ben another benefit of being an entrepreneur is the ability to be your own boss and provide jobs for others. So this is creating employment in your communities and you no longer have to listen to somebody to tell you what to do. You are the ones guiding other people to have successful careers. Another benefit is the ability for continuous personal and professional development through real life challenges and experiences. Like I said, you guys are going to take risk as entrepreneurs. And through your risk, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn what to do and what not to do. That's a benefit. As a change maker, that's how you have to see life. If you are taking risk and you are failing and making mistakes, those are okay. I would just tell you to never repeat your mistakes. That should be the difference from you and the average person. Learn from your mistakes and never repeat them and keep learning. And through those things, you'll be able to develop personally because you'll get to learn about yourself and professionally because you're gonna be challenged by whatever industry that you are in. Lastly, another benefit of you know, being an entrepreneur is the ability for long lasting societal impact and you know, it will give you the chance to create a legacy that's gonna last even after your existence. Take Bill Gates, for example. Bill Gates has been able to establish Microsoft. And we all know that Microsoft, even after Bill Gates passes away, Microsoft is gonna remain. That's a system he put into place. That's a legacy. So as an entrepreneur, you're gonna be benefited because you have the opportunity to make societal impact or create jobs for people. And through those things, you are able to make a legacy for yourself. You're able to make a name for yourself. And when, you're, when you are done, history is gonna remember you, your nation is gonna remember you and they're gonna respect you. Now, like I said, we're not trying to paint a perfect picture for you guys and telling you that life is easy or it's worth, you know, it's worth you know, dying for and there, is no, there are no challenges. That's not what we're saying. We're telling you as an organization that the challenges definitely outweigh the cost. Well, obviously you also need to understand what it's gonna cost you if you want to be an entrepreneur. So number one, insecurity of steady income. 
If you want to get into the nonprofit business and have your own organization, that's an entrepreneur. But then again, a cost that is going to happen to you is now there is no steady income. You control your income. So meaning that if people don't give you money, you're not going to have money. Or if you want to start your own business, you have to put your own money into the business. So as you're putting your money into the business, if it's not making much profit, you are not going to have any income because you need to keep reinvesting into the business. So that is a cost. That's something you have to be willing to accept and don't let it uh, hinder you from your ability of being successful. Another cost is the tendency to work long hours with no guaranteed benefits. You are going to work and work and work and work. But the good thing is, like I said earlier, is passion is what drives and distinguishes entrepreneurs. And because you are working those long hours, though you're gonna be exhausted at some point, it's really not gonna feel like work. But at the same time, it will mean that you are going to be not able to spend time with your family. You're not gonna be able to uh, you know, go to the next party that they're having at your school. That's what it means. So that's why it's costly to you because you're gonna be so busy working and not really have a social life. But then again, you could always do that later on. You could always do that at a different time. So that's another cost. Another cost is the ability to bear financial risk. You are not going to start a business using other people's money uh, when your business has not taken off the ground. You firstly have to invest in yourself. So that's a financial risk. When you are investing in yourself, you are taking the risk because you do not know what's going to happen. Your idea could be successful or your idea could not be successful. So that because you do not know, that's what makes it a risk. And then as an entrepreneur, it is going to cost you because you're going to find yourself in a position, especially when you first start, where you have to do everything. You are going to be uh, the secretary, you're going to be the CEO, the janitor, everything together. So you are going to be overwhelmed, exhausted, especially from the beginning. So that is a cost. It's going to drain you physically. Moving on. Now, the question is, okay, I've learned about the benefits. I've learned about who is and who is not an entrepreneur. I've learned about the cost. Now, I'm so interested. I still want to know how to become an entrepreneur. How do I do that? Well, very good question. First, you have to identify a need. You cannot be an entrepreneur without identifying a need because entrepre excuse me, entrepreneurs are people who find solutions to problems and problems I need. The easiest way to come up with an idea is to find a solution to a problem. Now, this could be a personal problem that you are going through or this could be a systemic problem, which means it's a problem that affects everyone combined or most people. It's a system that needs to be solved. So that's how you can become an, an entrepreneur is about identifying your problem. So we'll go back to the story of Kelvin. Kelvin identified a problem of communication and he found a solution. Now, later on in the video, he was telling you guys that he wants to you know, bring electricity. He wants to provide electricity. So he's going to build a windmill, which is going to use the wind and produce energy. That is a need. His community needs electricity. So he then came up with a solution to solve the problem. So questions that you need to be asking yourself is, what is the problem? Who does this problem affect? Is the problem in your school? Is, doesn't, is it affecting the students? Is it affecting the, the administrators? Or is it everybody combined? Is the problem in your community? Is it affecting the youth? Now, why is your idea or solution relevant? Why is it more important? Why is it the best solution to, to, to find a, a, an answer to whatever pro the problem is? Now, how are you going to overcome this? For example, how are you gonna bear the financial risk? Do you have the funds? And I will tell you that everybody, every one of you sitting there at some point have had an amazing idea, a great idea, but ideas without execution are worthless. So if you're not able to take your great idea and make it and bring it into reality by going through these steps, your idea is worthless, no matter how great you think it is. So remember that. Now, how do we find a need? 
you find a need by asking. Who's is someone talking to? You? So you find a need by asking, is there a lack of an essential product or service? So I'm gonna keep using Kelvin because Kelvin is from Sierra Leone and Sierra Leone is in the same West African region like Liberia. So we have very similar cultures and problems. So his need was, we, they did not have communication. They did not have electricity. A lot of you can relate to that. Yesterday you saw our generator broke down. What would you do in the case there is no electricity? That is an essential item. Communication is essential. Electricity is essential. It's a service. So you need to, you, in order to find a need, you need to ask, is there a lack of something that is essential? Because if you are just providing things that are nice to have, well, it's great, but it's not gonna be what's gonna, people are gonna want or to buy. The second question is, are you developing an, an idea, uh, a new idea or improving an existing idea? So you do not always have to, when you think of ideas, it does not always have to be brand new or the first, or no one has ever thought about this. You can look at the current way somebody is doing something and come up with a new way to do that same thing, except yours is gonna maybe use less resources or cost less time. And you are still an entrepreneur because you are still finding an innovative solution. So do not think that you have to go out there and challenge yourself to find completely new ideas. No, just think about how we are currently doing things and think about how we can do it better and make it happen. That's the biggest difference, making it happen. Now, the third question is, is your product or service a need or a nice to have? Do, does your community need this? Without this, is your community gonna be okay or are they not going to be okay? If the answer is they need this product or they need this service, then yes, go ahead. If it's nice to have, then you might need to rethink what it is you're trying to provide. The last question is, is this something you are passionate about, complaining about, or egotistic about? Now, if you're looking to find a need, these are ways that you can find a need. Maybe you might want to find a need because uh, like Kelvin, you're passionate about helping your people. That's your passion, you want to help people. Or maybe it could be something that you don't like, something that you hate. So you always complain about it, so you want to find a solution to it. Or maybe it's something, like I said, that you think you can do better. So you see somebody else doing it, and you say to yourself, I can definitely do that better. So you are egotistic about it. So those are ways that you can find a need but through your passion, through things that you complain about, and through things that you're egotistic about. Now, how do you establish a solution or form a business? First, you gotta understand your idea. You gotta understand what it is you're trying to do. How well can you identify, how well can you identify that, that problem? How well can you explain it to others to help them understand that it is a problem? And then have you talked to other potential customers or beneficiaries to see if they can give you feedback because though you might think it's a great idea, you might not have any idea if it's affecting other people if you do not talk to other people. And a lot of time people will tell you, oh, don't share your good ideas with other people. Well, as an entrepreneur, if you don't share your ideas, you're not going to get feedback. And feedback is what's gonna tell you if your idea or your solution is needed. So talk to people about it, but specifically talk to people who are your potential customers who are gonna benefit from it or people who are gonna give you feedback because they are experts. And then that will tell you what you need to work on, what you need to get rid of and how you can improve your idea overall. The third question in establishing a solution is, what is your business plan? Basically, this is the different uh, stages uh, uh, explaining what makes your business relevant, why is your business needed? Uh, how is your business going to be structured? What resources you need? The goals of your business and how you're going to attain all of these uh, objectives. That's your business plan. So you need to come up with a business plan and there are a ton of resources on the internet that can help you do so. Another thing in establishing a solution is you need to determine how much capital you're going to need. And capital means things like land, 
Do you need land to start your business? Do you need people working for you? Which is, do you need money? And then how are you going to raise that capital? Are you going to use your own money? Are you going to ask investors to give you money? So you can have a great idea, but you first need to identify what you need to start it. And then you need to identify uh, how you're going to find meet those needs. Is there going to be people investing in your idea because they believe in the reality of it? Is it going to be your friends and family? Or are you going to have to use your own personal funds? With me and Project Change, I had to invest my personal fund. Because when I first started and I explained to people what I was going to do, people thought it was great. Only six people donated to the first campaign and they gave me $400 and I was asking for $10,000. They only gave me 400. So because of that, I couldn't do the project, but because I was passionate about it, because I wanted to help and make a societal impact, I raised my own personal funds to make further change and to bring it into existence. So you need to understand how you're going to raise capital. And remember, capital is not just money, it's your land, your labor, and other resources you're going to need to bring your idea to reality. Another thing you got to remember is establishing systems and processes for ongoing improvements. So these can include financial system, training of employees, monitoring your sales, accounting for feedback. So if you just have an idea and you just establish it and you do not have any system put into place, it will affect your overall performance you will be affected by that. So you need to create systems, you need to create ways of how you're going to conduct your business that is gonna help you measure your performance. And you need to write those systems down so that in your absence, people can still know what to do and your legacy can still continue. So systems that are written down are systems that you need. Processes that are written down are processes that you need. The last question is, is, is this something you are passionate about or is it personal? It has to be something you're passionate, passionate about. It has to be something that you're personal, or that is personal to you because that's what's gonna keep you moving. That's what's gonna keep you going. If you're not passionate about it and you're just doing it for the money, you're only gonna go so far. You're gonna hate it in the future. Now, in order to, to, to be an entrepreneur, you, know how, you need to know how to enhance your financial IQ. You need to understand the concept of money. So quickly, I'm gonna go over these. So we're gonna talk about income and expenses. What is income, what are expenses? And then assets and liabilities. What are assets and what are liabilities? We're gonna have a quick activity. So income is anything that brings cash or puts money into your pocket. This is something that you earn. And there are four ways you can earn income. Like I said, the first two are not, are not entrepreneurs. The first two are employees. Remember, entrepreneurs are people who are their own bosses. So number one, you can be an employee and earn income by providing your time or service to other people like a market seller or police, or you can, you can be self-employed. Like you have your own firm, like a doctor, a doctor has uh, his own maybe clinic, a lawyer has his own firm. But for this, for these first two, you work for money, which means that you, if you don't go to work, you are not going to get money. You have to be there. Now, the last two ways to earn income is uh, being a business owner, an entrepreneur, so owning your own business, a franchise, uh, and then being an investor. So like you guys know Ben, uh, ben and I, Uri, the Uri Farms. He's a business owner. And uh, you could be an investor. An investor is somebody who uses that money and empower other people, other businesses. And for these two, a business owner and an investor, your money is working for you. And what that means is you can leave and go on a vacation and you are still going to have income because you have created the systems and the processes that will help you and enable people to work in your absence. So expenses. Expenses, so remember income is putting cash into your pocket the inflow of cash in your pocket. Expenses is the complete opposite, is the outflow of cash in your pocket. So money that is taken away from you. And now there are several types of expenses. You can have expenses for your housing, which is your rent, transportation, which is things like gas or taxi. Uh, this is money you pay to get from point A to point B. You can have expenses for food. You can have expenses for entertainment, going to uh, the different games, uh, BYC versus 
you know, which other team. So these are expenses. These will take money from you. So in order to better manage your money, you need a budget. A budget basically tells you your income, how much money you are getting and how much money you are taking out of your pocket. So you need a budget. And if you can see here, this was a budget I created way back in 2015. It's actually my personal budget. And at the time, I guess that's how much money I made. So you need a budget. And all a budget is, is telling you how much money you have and how you're gonna spend it. You cannot, you cannot put in your budget, you cannot oversee what you're making, you cannot overspend. You're gonna have a budget deficit, which means that you're spending more than you're making. It will put you in the negative. As an entrepreneur, you need to not do that. Income and expenses. So when income is greater than expenses, that's a budget surplus. If you make more money than you spend, that's surplus, meaning that you have more money to keep, to save. If your income is less than your expenses, that's a budget deficit, it's bad. It means that you have, uh, you're in the negative, you owe people money, you have debt. Now, how do you increase your income? You can increase your income by getting a job, so if you worked uh, at a school, you can maybe get a second job as a security. You can do that. Um, you can increase your income by learning, improving your technical skills. Maybe you do not know how to, uh, to sew. You can go and learn how to sew. Or maybe you do not know how to you know, uh, repair computers. So you can go ahead and improve on your technical skills to, to repair computers. It's basically continuing your education to become a specialist or an expert in a specific field. So improving your, your resume, improving yourself as a professional. These are ways you can increase your income. You need to listen because you are sitting there and thinking, oh, I'm just in high school. I don't have any idea. No, you can get a job or you can improve your skills to help you increase your income. Or you can start a business. You know, finding a need, like I said, and finding a solution to that need in your community, in your school, wherever you are. Or you can do so by investing. Maybe you have some money saved up. You can give that money to other people, invest into their dreams and ideas, and then they will give you return on your money based on how much you invested. Now, how do you decrease your expenses? Maybe you're not making so much money and you notice that you, know, you need to cut down on your expenses. You need to save more money. Firstly, you have to create a budget, like I said. A budget is gonna tell you how much money you have and you're gonna know how much you can spend and where your money is being spent or what it is that you're spending it on. And the second way you can decrease your, your expense is by acting your wage. You know your power or you're only working for $50 a month. Do not go buy something that costs you $100 every month. Act like the way, the, the amount of money you're making, you need to act in that manner. And then secondly, uh, thirdly is to negotiate. When you go buy things, don't try to pay the price that they say. A lot of us in Liberia, we are very good at this. Negotiate, try to get it for a cheaper price or maybe try to find the same quality for a cheaper price. And then fourth, uh, how you can decrease your income is by making alternative choices. So doing things that are less costly. So instead of eating at your favorite restaurant, uh, like, uh, what is it, Corona Hotel, maybe you can call drivers for yourself. That will help reduce your expense. So those are four ways you can uh, re decrease your expenses. So what are assets? Assets are any item with economic value. So things that have monetary value are going to put money into your pocket. So you have um, uh, quality, you have stocks and bonds, we have fixed income securities, we have commodities. Now what are liabilities? Liabilities are financial responsibility. These are things that you have to pay back. These are debt. take money out of your pocket. So debts or loans, mortgage, rent, you owe other people. So you need to avoid acquiring liabilities. They're not good for you as an entrepreneur. The less liability you have, the more you can invest into your future. And then this is what you need to take away. Income and assets, these are things that you want. You want to acquire more things uh, that have economic value and you want to be in a position where you're able to make money for yourself. Expenses and liabilities, these are things you need to avoid. So you need to know how much money uh, you are spending and know how to manage that and minimize that. And you also need to know 
liabilities like debts and do not try to acquire them. You need to avoid those. So our activity is, for example, cash. Is that an asset or a liability? Remember assets have economic value and liability takes away value and it takes money from your pocket. So having cash, is that an asset or a liability? Somebody shout the answer. Asset, how about the bank savings account? If you have a savings account and you have money in your savings account, is that an asset or a liability? Asset, so it's good. These are things that we want. A car loan, you took money out to buy a car. Is that an asset or a liability? So we don't want that, right? Does anyone want a car loan? Raise your hand. I'll give you a car loan. Very good. How about rent? You owe him the land. That's a liability, right? Yeah. So we don't want that as well. Now, this is the time for you to ask me questions and I'm gonna try to answer them. I got five minutes, so go ahead. Please come up and ask your question so I can hear you. Any questions? How can you identify what? I'm still not hearing it. How can you identify a what? So, uh, uh, Mel she's trying to say, uh, how can you identify Tarpenia? How can you identify one who is a entrepreneur? Okay, I, I understand. Thank you. Uh, for example, these are people that you see making the difference. They are making changes, they are improving your community. I'll give you a great example of a girl that I have so much respect for. Her name is Grace C. Baba, Grace Choiman Baba. She has her own uh, business and she sells, uh, what do you call it, polo to different supermarkets. She's living right in Liberia there. No excuse for you. This girl make her own polo and she go and convince supermarkets and they sell her polo in supermarket for $1.50 United States dollars. That is somebody who I know is an entrepreneur because she's making a difference. She is creating jobs for herself and for her community. That's how you know an entrepreneur. They are making impact. They are changing things for the better. Good question. Who else? Yeah. Uh is that turning your passion for business is one of the kind of business of an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So, say for instance, maybe you want to take, maybe you want to take your passion into business. Can a pastor be a businessman? Can a pastor be So you're asking me if a pastor can be a business person? Um, I would say yes and no. I understand, thank you for clarifying. 
So I will say yes and no at the same time. But I'm going to say no firstly so we can be clear. No, because you cannot, uh, being a pastor is not a for-profit business. You know, it's a godly calling and you're not there to make profit. So that is a no. You cannot use your passion for business because business is for profit. But yes, because a pastor can use and have a business mentality. A business mentality means that when he thinks about how he cares for his, his, uh, his congregation, how he cares for his staff that works for him, and how he's able to expand um, if he wants to open a different branch, you need a business mentality. So he will use his passion for that and apply a business mindset to run his church. So that's why I would say a yes again. Do you understand? So ultimately, just like project change, you know, we are not here to make profit, but we do apply business approaches to what we do. For example, we will have programs that people have to pay for. Huh? What was the question? Go ahead, ask your question. Come on, I, I went I went over that. Um We talk about the cost of being an entrepreneur right here. We talk about the, you know, the inability to have a secure income. We talk about you are going to work long hours. You're going to not have the time to socialize with your friends and family because you are working all the time. That's, the disadvantage. That's a disadvantage. We talk about the fact that you have to invest your own money and you could lose that money if you're not willing to put in the work or if your idea is not great. That's a risk, that's a disadvantage. When we talk about you being able to do everything means that you will be tired, you will be overwhelmed, you're gonna be exhausted. That is a disadvantage, nobody likes to be exhausted. Any other question? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Mayama. You said um every like you, you said earlier that everyone wants everyone wants to be an entrepreneur, right? Uh, everyone wants to lead to be able to take initiative to do something. Um Everyone wants to be that, but not everyone is willing to take the risk. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that everyone can be that. And I agree with you. Mm -hmm. because, because if everyone becomes an entrepreneur, then who would be there to carry on what, what the entrepreneur wants them to do? It would be like entrepreneur and one another doing things. Um, I agree. I agree with you. And absolutely oh gosh. Not that everyone can be an entrepreneur. What I'm saying is everyone cannot. That's why, because most people are not willing to take the risk. And if everyone is an entrepreneur, then who will be buying the product or services that entrepreneurs are making? You understand? So, but we yeah. do majority of people to be entrepreneurs, especially for our Liberian society, because we know and understand that the government is not doing much to help our economic situations. So most yeah. of us need to take the responsibility and be entrepreneurs. And then the other people, it's okay if they are employees and they, are, they want to work for other people because there's nothing wrong with that. You still have your, your secure income. You know that you're going to get paid every month. 
Uh, you, you have a structure that you follow. There's nothing wrong with being an employee. But entrepreneurs, we want more freedom and we want to help other people and make a, a legacy for ourselves and for our need, our family. Yeah, that's right. Everyone, everyone don't have the fit to be that. Because if you are an entrepreneur, you have to take risks and you have to make some policies or trust or strategic decisions. You have to take initiative and you have to learn to be strong to never give up. And some people are weak, not that they don't want to do it, but they don't think they have the intimacy to do that. Right. 